In this video, we're going to show you how to remove the coils on a rude, or really actually a ream compressor. So here we go. Of course, the first thing you want to do is uh, switch the breaker off so there's no electricity going to uh, the unit itself. Now, it was diagnosed as having a leak of the co coolant, so there shouldn't really be any pressure in these lines. But just in case, we're going to take those caps off the valves down there. He's uh, unscrewing those, all the screws around the top and uh, try to release all the pressure. Is that pressure in there? Yeah, yeah, it's pressure. How come it wouldn't work? Yeah, because I take care of the, 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 the funny over here. Uh -huh. So it helps if you've got a driver and you've got to get all these screws off. So we've got to go all the way around and take them all off and then we can pull the top. And as you can see, having the right tools is a big help. So anyway, we pulled all the screws off the top. You can see it's all loose. See all those holes right there? Those were all the screws. There's a whole bunch of them, so I'm not going to bore you with doing it all. All right, and so there's a plate over here that has all the electrical in there. It's got the capacitor and uh, all the wires that come in. Uh, and uh, we've got to get in there because we've got to uh, cut some of these uh, ties that are around the wires so that we can move this top off of... Uh, off of the unit itself. Of course it's probably a good idea to double check to make sure that the breaker's off because you got your fingers right next to where the electricity comes in. You see that right there? Yeah. You don't want to put your fingers on there if you got live uh, electricity coming into this thing because it will knock you on your ASS. Now he's got to look inside there and there's some more uh, ties that we've got to cut so we've got to get in there and do that. Once those wires on the outside underneath that plate are loose, we can kind of move the top up, as you can see. We're able to pull it forward and pull some of the wires through that hole right there, and then we can get down to the plug. So here he's pulling off the plug that goes right into the uh, condenser. You can see the plug unhooks there. Now we got to take that one tie off of uh, that one copper wire there. So he's got the uh, cutter on there, and he's going to pop that off of there so that we can... Uh, get the top off and work on the um, on uh, the pipes on the inside. Once that's loose, then we can set the top down and uh, it'll still be hooked up to all the wires on the plug, but it'll set down easier and we can get uh, to the other uh, parts that we need to work on. You gotta be careful here because you don't wanna accidentally cut one of your wires. So you gotta be careful taking that thing off. Now we've got it nice and loose. Got one more tie there, but I think we can roll it around and set it on the ground so that uh, we don't have to cut that one. This is all this stuff. This, what? So where was the leak at? Did you yeah. were saying? Yeah. Look, the, it's from here. It's here, like this. Oh, that whole thing, huh? Yeah. So what would cause that? Well, I mean, this is two years old. Yeah, but that's happened. Does it happen a lot? No, a lot of them. I called the Ream in, in Georgia and I said, hey, you know, we just bought this thing two years ago. Mm -hmm. So this whole thing's got to come completely out. Yes, this one. Next, we're going to put a torch right up here on the high pressure collar. And then we're going to go right here and put a torch on that and melt those off. That's the next step to pulling this thing out of here. So that big black thing right there is the compressor. And that copper uh, pipe that comes out is a high pressure line that feeds the coils all the way around. All right, so you're going to need an acetylene torch. And basically what he's doing here is uh, they're heating this up right at that little joint. It's got kind of like a collar that the uh, copper pipe fits in. And that's going to loosen up all the solder that's all around it. And then that um, pipe will just pop out once it gets a little hot. You can see he's using the uh, uh, pliers up top there. So watch, it's going to pop any second now. And there it is, it's out. You can see how hot that thing is. It turns it completely red. So now we got to do that in a couple different places because we need to uh, release it over here where it's coming in on the low pressure area. Um, and you can see now he's going to heat it up and then he's going to get in there and uh, put his wrench on that. So uh, got to be careful too because this stuff will burn you. And um, <laughs> you know, it gets nice and hot and then it pops off. We still have to take the other joint off, but we're going to do that once we pull it out. All right, so we've disconnected those two copper pipes and we're ready to go ahead and pull this unit out. But first, we've got to take out a couple screws on this one panel that's holding it in. 
and once that's done, now we're ready to pull it out. But you got to be real careful because you don't want to uh, screw up any of the copper pipe that's in there and uh, coming off the compressor. So you got to be really gentle and gingerly take that out. Now we also got to take this little piece of copper with that valve on it off of there too. So we're going to get the torch and do that. So this little uh, piece of pipe here we need to save. So they're going to melt it off. And you'll see it comes out of that collar once they melt all of that uh, solder that's on there very easily. And then we're going to save that because we're going to need it to hook up the other um, condenser later on. So we'll put that over here. And that goes right at the bottom down there. So we're going to put a little tape over the high pressure and low pressure uh, uh, pipes here just so that no bugs get in there or water. You just want to kind of protect that so, because later on you got to fill that all with coolant. You don't want it to be contaminated at all. So that'll try to keep the stuff from getting in there. So now all the pressure's out of all the lines. And uh, what we're going to do is just put the caps back on these two um, connectors here so that uh, you don't get any water or anything in there because you don't want uh, to uh, corrupt your um, your coolant once you put it in there. So you got to so we'll keep that like that until they get back and we put the new one in. All right, so anyway, um, to get my new coil from the manufacturer, they have to take the old one in and uh, exchange it. Uh, this rood comes with a 10-year warranty. So the parts are warrantied for 10 years, but uh, uh, these guys, <laughs> I'm one year out of uh, my warranty on the labor. But you can see it's a little bit, you know, corroded. And uh, yeah, what the hell? We might as well put a brand new one in there. It should work 10 times better. And um, I'm hoping that uh, we don't have any other cracks or leaks on any of these pipes, but we might. So that may be another issue that we'll have to, to look at once we go ahead and, and reinstall the new coils into this rude uh, compressor. So they're going to take that coil back to the distributor and get a brand new one. It's going to be a ream, but the ream will work in here because Ream owns Rude and basically they're the exact same uh, pieces of equipment. Alright, if you like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out my other awesome videos.